damn thing. Is that right? I guess it is. It's as good as it's going to get. Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. You are joining me just before I go mad trying to put Mike's bivvy up. That's right, I'm not a carp angler. I don't have all this paraphernalia with me, but I'm very grateful to use it. You're catching me here at Berry Hill Fisheries. I'm on the main lake. You're catching me as I'm just finishing off filming a bream episode for our TA Fishing Show. And I'm going to, well, I've now decided to stay overnight, see if I can't catch carp, because this is a prime old school estate type lake. It's a pleasure to fish. Most of the fish, I would say, for, for me, if I've only fished it once a year, twice a year, maybe, maybe once a year, I catch them at night. So I'm going to give it a go. I've still got my bream rods out. I've done my filming for the bream. So I'm going to hang on and see if we can't get you guys a second episode out of the same trip. Well, this, <laughs> this was an episode putting this thing up. Oh. People, this thing ought to make an episode as well. I got it for nothing out of a loft. Somebody dumped it in a loft. It took me everything I could do to get it out of the loft. It's bent and buckled and pretty well busted, which is why it was dumped up there. And last time I used it, apparently guys commented on the comments page, I'm sleeping on it upside down. I've got the foot at the head end at the head at the foot end. Anything could happen with this one. People, I'm, I'm, I'm putting the bivvy up. I've got one rod chucked out with just a bag. That's all it is with some freebies on it. Already, already had a carp run. I don't know if we get this one in for you people. He's going right for the trees. We'll have to put a bit of pressure on him. There's some big overhanging willow trees here. He obviously knows they're there. Yep, he's going for them. He's in them, I think. He's in them, he's in them. He's right in them. That's the ducks. Come on. Last time I did this, I bust Mike's for I think I got him out. I think he's out. Let's see, he's a drag. I hooked him so far out there, he just kited round. Let's see what we've got here, folks. This would be eyes in the rushes. It's running a bit of a gauntlet here. What is it? Doesn't feel a big fish, but. You never know here at Berry Hill Fish, which is on the old lake. Spin this around, I've no idea what you people are getting there. Everything is all over the place. You get what we get, as they say. I haven't thrown boilies in, I haven't done any baiting up. Common. Okay. Carp net is here. Ooh. As I say, people, I was, I was actually finishing this bream epic, and I thought, I'll give it a go, and I'll show you what I'm using in a minute for bait. Well, it's a boilie, obviously. It's going well. Very, very well, actually. What a way to finish a bream trip and start a carp trip. Going back one. Wow, this one is scrapping and scrapping. Looks like close to a double. Close to a double, I'm not quite sure. He's in, he's in boys. <laughs> what a star. Hang on, camera's gonna go over. Oh, I've already weighed him. He is 11 pounds, seven ounces. Lovely colouring around the eye there. It's a common, so he's gonna go mad. Really pleased with that one. Just a quick one, people, because he's gonna go nuts. Double figure carp. I think that's the fastest I've ever caught a carp for one of our films. Haven't even got my other rods out. There we go. Do you know what, boys? A double figure carp to finish off. Oh, yeah. Just to calm down. He's fresh as, fresh as a daisy. A double figure carp. And I've only just started. And that's after another eight or nine pounder I had when I was bream fishing. I think you can see him there. Get here, what a result. I'll probably blank for the rest of the night now. So here I was, setting up my bivvy. Just managed to prevent my brain from overloading by getting the bed chair, which is definitely broken, fixed. What have I been using? Well, oh, brain rod's going. 
pretty much going. It's terrible, isn't it, really, this fishing business? Trying to do. Trying to do, I missed him. Oh, I'm going to leave that down while I get sorted. I've already finished the bream film. <laughs> I still can't help, I'm still catching bream. Um, it's just what I call individual out there bait. And it is an 18 mil. Let me read it, you know, I'm like the carpy warpy stuff. It's a CC more Pacific tuner, but it's an 18 mil, really hard one. And I think it's for stop crayfish tuna off the hook, because I did a trip with Mike and we wound it in the morning and the hooks were bare. We've been there all night, or half the night with bare hooks. They said, oh no, 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 they chew the boilies off. You want these hard ones. But I've used this specific, specific? I've used this specific Pacific tuna. Um, and I've been well pleased with that one and this one, which is called Peaches and Cream. So what I'm doing in my little stocking here, this is a PVA bag for the beginners. It's not actually a PVA bag, it's mesh stocking. You know what they're like, they start hitting that keyboard like almost immediately. Uh, I put a few pellets in, not many because I've got the wrong size mesh stock in, they've got the wrong size. Yeah, there's always somebody want to bitch and moan. <clears throat> I'm going to put a few of the small peaches and cream in there. Oh, I always do that, I always do that, always falls off. And one, just one of those hard baits. I'll tell you what <clears throat> a lot of guys do, they put in a lot of two mil or four mil pellets. I've tried to stop doing that now because I figure all you're doing is attracting all the small fish, which then eat all the small pellets. They, I think people think the carp eat them, and I don't think they do that. They get attracted by the activities of the car, of, of the small fish, and they will come over. I do, I do agree with that, certainly. But if I'm out all night, which I'm going to be tonight, I really don't want to be wasting all that pellets when I know the carp are out and about. Daytime, maybe yes. Always remember to tie a knot back in the stocking. It's ready to use. And please, please, people, keep it dry. Dry, 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 dry hands. All you youngsters out there, if you use this stuff, you've got to keep your hands dry. And they give you a little tube thing here. Put it back in the tube. Put the lid on it, special sealed lid. So now, I'm rigged up. I'm using the same Pacific tuna, 18 mil on there, that I caught that fish on and the previous one earlier when I was bream fishing and I'm just going to hook it through once maybe twice for safety and do you know what set the, set the weight so it's just pinched in there it just pinches in pop that's all fixed I'm just wanging it out there I'm not casting to the end of the island I'm not going for any channels or anything like that I'm just chucking it out there and hopefully they pick it up As you can see, I haven't got a backrest. I'm just leaving it up there while I actually got my self-organised. I'm going to switch that off while I set the bobbin up, which is, let's show you, it's technical. It's a washing up bottle top filled with plasticine or Play-Doh to give it some weight. If it's very twitchy and I wasn't doing this bolt rig a, te a technique, then I would be using one without that extra weight in there, but it just, just allows me a drop back bite there. then on there that's it we're all set I get the that's, that's all set for drop back as well and do you know what guys I think I'm gonna get my main carp bait out there probably wind bream rods in and uh, just concentrate on the carp and concentrate and get my dinner I've had nothing to eat well I've got all sorts of bait here I've got some of these to put on which are peaches and cream again. They didn't have the 18 mil so I could get bothered by bream. So, 
there's that Pacific Tuna one, not selling them, we're not selling them, not involved or anything like that, I'm just telling you, this is what I've been catching on. It smells of Pacific Tuna. These, by the way guys, are at least five years old in here. I try to use them very sparingly. I, another thing I do, I don't, or rather I don't do, I don't really like, I don't really like cutting them up. You know, people cut them up, because again, the small fish eat them, and I'd sooner leave them big for the carp. So, I put my few boilies in there. Oh, <laughs> maybe I will have to cut them up. That one's not going in, that one is. Shake it down. I'll just bundle them as best I can down there because I should have got a spare mesh stock in and I haven't, so that's it. when I run out, I run out, that's all there is to it. I'm gonna tie the knot there. What an evening, oh, look at this. I've only done it 101 times before. I'm just, holy shit, Christ, this, this is this is totally awesome fishing. This, this is as you see it happening, people. This is the end of the bream story. <laughs> you don't use a bite indicator, you listen to the splash as the rod goes in the water. Now, let's see if I can get sorted here and get this one out, out the way. Well, that's what you call them. Um, Sensitive bite indication when fishing with Totally Awesome. A single grain of sweet corn, so you can watch a bream film, or you guys if you want to catch bream. So I've got the small net as well. I can't bear putting small fish in those giants, great big monster carp nets because it's like you lose them and you don't even know they're in there. And what a quiver tip rod. That was some take, man, that was some take. For a bream, you probably have to go and have a lie down for about three months now with all that energy you spent. It's be bream of the session, I think. There we go. That is a nice bream. That is a nice one. Wait till I drop the microphone in the water. No, no, no. Is it true? I hope it doesn't go mad all over me. But there is the end of the bream show. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I can feel him tense and ready to go. There he is, look at that in the, in the sunlight. The gold of the sunlight. Could be a funny mouth there, mate. It's a bit of a funny mouth. Nevertheless, a big bream. And the tips I gave you in the bream film, it shows you it works, boys. Away you go. Oh, yuck. Look at it, look at it, look at it. There's still somewhat twitching around out there on that on that Pacific boily. Guys, I've just picked up a, I've just took up again, I'm trying to get the the camera on. I haven't even got my bob resting. I can't believe it. Look, look, I haven't even got my back resting. On another carp. That's just ridiculous. There is no bait out there at all except what's in that mesh bag. I do not understand this. I appreciate it, but I don't understand it. Just goes to show a little, just when we think we know all about the fishing, no, do we need buckets and buckets of bait? Well, if you're told you do, and I use quite a bit sometimes, and here you go, you don't. I don't know what this is, maybe a bream, because they did say if I go down on boily size, you'll get a bream. We'll find out in a minute. I don't trust this, I don't trust this one. I feel he's gonna go heavy in a minute. Getting tightened up on it, there he goes. I thought so, I thought so. It's a big bream if it's a bream. It's a carp. Oh, that's just ridiculous, that's like three fish in a row and I've put no bait out. Shall I put bait out? I don't know, somebody tell me. That could be that bloody tuna. Nobody's using that, that Pacific tuna bait. I wonder, what do I know about it? Here he comes.
listen, don't tell anybody about that, that bait, will you? Just in case, it might be a good bait. I can't believe three fish in a row and I haven't even baited up with it yet. So I tell you how many boilies have gone out there in that flavour. Six, three on the hook, which caught fish, and three loose ones. Small fish, small fish. Wow, he's got in there. Small one, this one, but still. They all count. It's mat time. Well, I brought mics, buzzers. Check the batteries are working. And in fact, when I've closed them, I've left them both on. So I've got two flat batteries. So I've got my two tiny little buzzers there that I'm using for a bite indication. I've got my second cart run out after all that fracas, and I'm going to pound out there and I'm going to, I was going to bait out, oh, it's still getting bream. I was going to bait out here. I'm now going to bait up there because I've seen some little wakes going across the surface and I think that's the carp out there. So I'm going to chuck two carp rods. This one in fact is over there and I'm going to put sort of pound it with some bream ground bait. So what's happening so you know the pouch is squashing as I pull it under maximum tension it's crushing the ball and then breaking up so you get yourself one with a rigid pouch so you can pull it like this and it doesn't compress the ball of ground bait. It is four balls of ground bait. Right, the reason that I'm going so high is because I want it to explode on impact with the water. That's why I'm shooting it extra high. And also what I can do is, with my other rod, I've got some corn there. I might put out one of the um, the spawns, which is a capsule. For those who don't have a plastic capsule, you can put bait in and it goes on impact. I might, I might not. I think there's enough out there now. Tell you what, at least they know I'm here. Well, I finally had the fish calm down a bit. Bream's sort of gone off quite over where I pounded it after that last carp so I've got, to, I've got to have something to eat don't know if there's enough gas in this one this was so people know 19th of May 2018 I'm still getting a little bit out of it if I can just heat this one can up I'll be so pleased I feel as though it's free yeah. spaghetti bolognese You've got to get it in you. I haven't got much to eat actually. Now, see if we can burn that. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Now, I don't need anything kicking off. Oh, brain rod's going. I don't need anything kicking off for a minute. I've got to have something to eat. The wife's giving me some uh, some health food. An entire pack of six. <laughs> but unbeknown to her, I've been shopping as well and bought an entire pack of six of those. So I'm alive by the morning. Yeah, a little bit more. Hopefully, hopefully. I have got a spare gas bottle, I'm not completely stupid. Come on, Mr. Bream, one more to close out with. Do you know, that's the first time I've actually had three carp in the daytime here at Berry Hill Fisheries, so it's quite unusual. Did, did I just say three carp? This ain't a bream, this ain't a bream. What's gonna to happen to my spag bowl? And my trouser leg? Oh my God. <laughs> this is some crazy ass session, I'm telling you. Absolutely ridiculous. This feels like a better car, guys. Don't know. Same bait. Same bait, are we on? We're on there, I think we're on. Don't need the bream rod going off. In fact, I'm gonna try. This is a long way out this fish, I'm going to try and get this bream rod in. It's 
close. in the realms of being in with a chance. I'm calling this a slightly better carp. Oh, that drags. Enough to tear the lips off a dinosaur. Oh, what a session, what an evening. It is beyond belief. Absolutely that wind that was blowing early on is it's gone really still. So there we go, boys. I'm not going to weigh this one. It is a double. It's about 12 pounds, I, should, I guess. So let's get him back in the water. Same flavour boily. It's a lovely looking common there. That duck is going to get it soon. He's eating everything. If he has my spank bowl, I'm telling you what, he'll be upside down and under the water. I'm not eating the spank bowl once he's been pecking, pecking his filthy. This is one mad car. Go, go, go. If you want to go, go. He's gone. You shove off. That's my spank bowl. Mad session. Madness. Look, that's all I've got to eat tonight. It's stone cold. I only need that other one to kick off and I'll be in deep trouble. As you can see, we're fishing and look at the setting behind me. My office for the evening. Birds, I can hear them. It was right there. A single beep. I feel more fish coming. I've got to get this bag bowl down. Well, I'm a mess. Covered in fish slime, carp and bream. I finally got the bream story finished. And I finally got my third rod out. Just over there. I just dropped it in the bream swim with um, a big peaches and cream 18 mil on there and I'm hoping I don't get a bream on it and I've even got yes folks I've even got my food cooking or boiling or sticking to the pan and I just need to eat something because as you can see that is absolutely an idyllic setting there and I feel there's going to be more fish coming and I'm going to wait till it's dark and these ducks are gone and I'm going to try and put some floating crust out there because there might be the outside chance a fish comes up in here close. But first, food. Now I haven't got my big camera, I've got the head camera, I've got the cannon there. So I've no idea, that's not great in low light. I did make a bit of a mistake here. Should have bought the big camera. I can remember this one using it on a boat on the Man Alone series. It's not great in low light. It goes all peculiar and whatever. So we'll just get what we get tonight when it gets dark. It's getting dark now. The boudoir is all rigged out. I put most of the bait inside. Don't want rats in there if you can help it. And hopefully that bed chair holds up. I somehow think, unless it just shuts off and I've had the feeding spell, that I think it might uh, might be a busy, busy old night. But four carp already, two doubles. I'm not arguing, I'd like to get some lumpy, a big one, maybe 15 plus. I'm gonna set the target at 15 plus tonight. I've also got the dawn, but what a setting this place is. And a state lake like they should be. Mixed fishing like it should be, not just carp. I am carp fishing, but there's roach, everything, perch, everything's in here, pike, zander. It's a real, real good mixed fishing. It's just a shame that the big carp waters where they just take everything out, it's just all carp. That's, uh, it's a shame there's a lot of good fish in there that could be caught by pleasure anglers. It's a pleasure to eat this. I haven't bought enough food, I know I haven't bought enough food. Anyway, let's go for it, peeps. 
get the worst of the filth off it. Should have bought two tins of this. Should have bought two tins. Oh well. How do those people survive for like five days with no food? I know they can't survive water. Actually, actually don't have an awful lot of water, to fairness. Excuse me while I eat my, what looks like, dog food. Well, the dining establishment is closed and the tea room, as you can see, is open. And it's still going. One and a quarter years. Obviously I haven't used it very much. And the other thing, when you're cooking with these things, they're really efficient, but you don't need them really roaring hot. You need to tune them down. A, it saves gas, and B, you know, you don't stick everything to the bottom of the frying pan or just waste all that heat. It's strange how that feeding spell was manic. Manic as I got here, trying to fight with this bivvy. Very, very strange. I've got a floodlight as well, people, so if I do get one in the dark hours, Gentlemen, two gentlemen carping over there. I assume they're there all night. They will definitely know when my flood light goes on. Hopefully, we we'll get enough light if we do get one to actually. Oh, might have been the duck. To actually um, see if we can get a decent one out of this. I'm fancying floating crust when it's pitch black, and I'm hoping there's not a full moon. I've not done great with full moons, I have to say. Other than the odd fish off the top floater fishing, full moons generally, for me, I find, even sea fishing, a kiss of death. How's that kettle doing? Yeah, it's going to be a while. Tea, and of course, I'm not exactly short of cakes. I mean, I sort of enjoy this because I'm not a bivvy man. You know that, you know I'm not. I can't be doing... I mean, if I had to do two nights talking to the bailiff, I said, if I had to do two nights in a... Is that me? Must be a guy over there. If I had to do two nights in a row, I think it would totally do my head in. I just, I would get so bored so quickly. One night I like. There we go. There's the old Puffin Billy, as usual, on Mike's TA Outdoors Bushcraft Show. But not exactly a bushcraft fire, is it? They're really good, these cookers, and even the, even the cookers' mics, I've got to tell you, even the cookers' mics. I steal everything off him if I can. Well, he wouldn't steal, who would steal that kettle, let's face it. Yeah, well that... The light's on. I don't know if anybody is at home. Yeah, I, I actually like this type of fishing. Oh, look, no, that's, that's not true. I don't like this style of bolt rig fishing where the fish hooks themselves and all you do is wind them in. It's extremely, extremely effective. I'm not knocking the method. I personally don't like it. I think it takes loads of skill out of the fishing. But there's no question it does work. It's good because it lets me relax. Because of that reason, I can actually not necessarily fall asleep in here for three days. I'm fishing. I've done a bream film in the afternoon and here I'm going to put a night session in on top of that bream fishing during the daytime. And you know, I'm 68. I'm still go. I'm still going to be doing it. But I really enjoy pushing it as hard as I can. But when it's like this, a beautiful evening, I do like it because I know it takes a strain off me. With a carp can hook itself. Yes, yes. It, it, you know, it's sort of idiot proof, isn't it? But it makes you relax, or it makes me relax. That's all I can say about it. I do enjoy it, and of course, it gets me out another month or so it's freezing cold I'm not going out all night at my age why would I I've done all that winter night fishing I've, trust me I've done it what for something I can catch you in the daytime winter night fishing for cod off the beach used to do that plenty plenty but no cod around now hooked up boys I don't know if you're going to see anything of this I haven't got time to Put, put the floodlight on it, I might pick my other line up as well. I was just watching a guy fight one way over there in line with the big mansion. And I had about three beeps and I thought, do you know what, I'm going to hit that. And indeed, a 
indeed it is a carp. Now, when a fish is going the opposite direction, obviously you have to give line. But all the time he's doing this slow nodding, his head is towards you. So if you can just keep his head towards you, every time he kicks with his fins, it's going to come slightly towards you. You're just waiting for that rod to load up a little bit extra. And if you do this, you should be able to get the fish quite close before he really, really takes off. So those head shakes, you see, he's trying to turn his head shakes, the nodding of the rod of the head shakes. Where he's trying to turn around. If he turns around, he's going to have a lot more power. Because he's facing towards me, and he puts the power on, there's only one way he's going, that's even more towards me. I think I'm under my other line, I'm hoping so. Oh, I've got my other line in the middle. Let's have a little look here. I think I'm clear. I think I'm clear. I don't expect you'll, you'll get very much of this. I think I'm clear of the other line. Here he comes. He's coming. He's coming slowly. Feels a little bit heavier, people. I hate, hate to say it could be bigger, but. Probably another common. I'm just filming this, I have no idea what you're getting. I feel he's going to wake up in a minute. I feel he's going to wake up. Oh dear. Oh dear. I might get lucky here. Okay, so I'm not lucky. Okay. Another common. I think he's going to swim if he kicks. Oh yeah, nice fish this time. I'm going to go over the top here. I'm going to switch this off for a second, people. Because this is oh yeah, that's a nice one. There we go. I'm hoping you can see him in the light there. I've no idea. Let's get him in the scales. I'm calling him. He might go the other side. He might go the other side of 14. This one's really frisky because you saw I brought him in. Didn't let him turn around, so he hasn't really scrapped much. I'm going to try and get one lift for you. There we go. You'll have to see what you can see, people. 17 pounds. Best pictures I can get. I should have bought the big camera. But listen, <laughs> what a fish. I said I wanted one about 15. But 17. Let's get him straight back. I feel me getting wet here, people. I feel me getting wet somewhere. Along the way. Here he goes. Good fish. Now I had the spag bowl. There's my tea. I can't even have my tea and cakes now. Five carp to 17. Wow. And a mess in there. Goodness me, what a session. So with no bites on the inside on that bream swim, on that uh, single 18 mil pieces of cream boily, kind of surprised. I thought the carp would move in there, I've got to be honest. But is it the fact the pieces of cream? I wonder if I should try this, what is it called? Pacific tuna, the super hard one. Maybe I should try that in there because I'm getting fish on both of those out, you know, deep in the middle of the lake or three quarters of the way across. Or tempted just to put a bag on it and heave it out. But I think I'm going to change the pieces of cream. I think I'm going to put that Pacific tuna on. You know, that would have been six fish if I hadn't lost it. That's six fish on the trot on the same bait. I think it's pretty time to change. I think we're getting people, that's a bit bright, that's a bit bright there. I've basically switched that one off. Hey, you might be able to see a bit now I'm actually on again. I don't know if I've picked my other line up. Just getting dark. I mean, it's, in the background you can see the sky up there, but the sky's pretty black. I think I'm clear my other line. Come on, babe, come on. I can't use a head cam. I've got my uh, head torch on now. I can't use a head cam because I'm just going to get nothing. I'm not sure what I'm getting in this one. Though. There is a fish here, I can assure you. Oh, he's off. There you go, pinged off. I think I've got everything back. There, got it all back. Just pinged off the hook. 
bad luck. Well, shame to lose that fish, but listen, I can't emphasize enough. When you, oh, the ducks are going crazy. When you want to use the same boilie, so that fish just pulled off there. I could put a fresh boilie on, but I think, why? Make sure you get some tissue paper, handkerchief, and dry it off, because as soon as you put moisture on those bags, or on the PVA, bags or mesh, it's gonna to start to dissolve, so make sure it's dry. I always do that first. Check the lead still nipped in there on the release system. And then I put my bait into the mesh bag, my freebies. <clears throat> I don't do it before because that's still getting air on it, you know, to, to dry out. Here we go. Shake it down to keep hold of it this time, Graham. I was putting those uh, other boilies in there. I'm not going to bother now. I'm just use it. It seems they're just the carpet just out there. I don't think they need a free one of those uh, hard ones because you don't get too many. I think you get 35 in a in a little bottle. I'll set the scene while I'm doing this. There's owls, parakeets. I've heard ducks. Yeah, duck ducks. Yeah, we know the ducks are there. Um, probably hear foxes later in the middle of the night and they do that screaming, howling, depending whether it's a mating thing or vixens howling. They sound like a strangled cat sometimes. <coughs> okay, so now that's had time to dry. More planes now, which is quite annoying. I don't know what this mic actually picks up this way, but it might be you're picking everything up. Just check. Where are we? I can't see the camera. Just check that that is nice and free and it's not wrapped around the hook. And I like to go through once, turn it just below the knot, so the knot's going to take longer to dissolve. It might just be a little blob over the point of the hook, so that's all ready to go out. Fingers crossed I can see why I'm casting. set boys. All set, get yourself one of these little hedge torches as well. I mean, I've got this big floodlight luckily and um, don't do like I do, try and get yourself, everything's arranged out the way so you don't fall over stuff stumbling out in the middle of the night. Probably won't get much sleep tonight, I'm going to be sitting in the chair for a while. The right hand buzzer is playing up, I think probably the batteries are going on it and I'll probably put the cover on and maybe it's just clicked down but it's, it's like intermittent so I'm not going to leave that out and go to sleep if I do want to go in the bed and go to sleep I will wind that one in and possibly just tweak the sound a little bit on the other two Guys, that weird light you can see over there is actually <laughs> quite about 200 yards away with a bait boat with lights on. I've never seen anything like it. It's got rear lights, it's got headlights, it's got everything. <laughs> and I, I thought, what in God's name is that going over the water? And that, you won't see the movement. If I keep the camera still, you will. It's going all the way back into there. And he's guiding it in. And look at the light off his headlights on that boat. That's phenomenal. You can see the guys, whoopsie. You can see the guy's headlights. I think he's driven it into the rushes there. It's weird, isn't it? That, eh? I've never seen that before. I have to say, I have seen bait boats. I've never seen them with all the headlights and everything like that. And here I am with five carp under my belt and I'm just throwing out in the middle of the lake. Ah, saved his batteries. 
Well, I've seen something different tonight for sure. Wow, fish is giving me all sorts of grief, this one. That one was 13.9 people. It's a lovely looking fish, that one. That one's 13.9. Hook pulled out, it doesn't matter, it's about 10 pounds. 10 rather than 10 or 11. Wow, that came straight after the other one. Right, I'm just gonna, just gonna switch this one off for you. So I'm not sure what this camera's like, I'm using the floodlight on top of it. I'm a little concerned about the on off buzzer, one of these Mike's buzzers, intermittent. So I've used almost sort of old school, which we used to have a penny, an old penny put on the bail arm, or on the spool by the bail arm, open the bail arm and have a tin tray underneath. And then when the line ran out, it knocked the penny off and it fell onto the tin tray. Because years ago we had no buzzers, we just stayed awake all night and I feel that might be coming tonight somehow. So this is my setup. This is what I've got here, as best you can see it. My drinks bottle. Married to the old spaghetti bolognese tin, and then I'll come over the top and show you the bobbin. And when this pulls, that's going to go clattering on the floor. I've got it absolutely balanced there. So that's my backup system there. I'm not sure whether it's going to be copied at all. It may well be a first for Berry Hill Carp Fishery. My bottle. Spag bowl over the top, and then maybe the buzzer as well. But there you go. Everything else is looking all good. What am I on now? Seven carp. Wow. This is not good, dropping these boilies everywhere because that attracts rats. Oh, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. Fish on. I've just literally walked back because there's a fish on there. Oh my God. <laughs> I must have put the bean can too tight. Well, it's actually still on, people. My bean can's still there as well. My uh, spaghetti bolognese can's still there. I've still got the fish on. Don't want him kiting left if I can. It's literally, I walked back to the bivvy, heard a bit of a rattle with a can, and that was it. Didn't knock it off though. Ridiculous fishing. Peaches and cream this time, boys. And I'd say fish is about 10. Now don't do it, don't do it. I've had a bad night for leafy fish. So I guess the fish is about 10, 11 pounds, something like that. But a major session. And there is a boilie that did the damage. Peaches and cream. Well. I am at the present time, guys. I'm just chilling. It's just gone a little bit quiet, a little bit quiet. I cannot grumble because I've had, when I started finishing that bream film, I had the first fish. At three in daylight, which is, you know, I've never done here before. So I've had seven on Pacific tuna, 
one on peaches and cream but the peaches and cream is cast straight out and the other two rods are cast to the left. Now if you cut those two rods let's say in half and go well you've had three and a half fish on there and one on there is still better on the left uh, with that bait is it was it just the fish aren't straight out in front the fish are more to the left. I think it's a bit of both to, to be honest guys but it's very very difficult all I know is those two rods are staying there all night. My spank bowl can if it does go off will cease to exist about maybe just before 12 I'll tough it out it's now 20 to 11 so I've had like it's ridiculous really I've had three fish in the day like I've had eight fish by just after half past 10 or say half past 10 and I've never had that here before I must admit and I've never fished this I swim other than for sand or I've never fished this carp fished here it's nearly always people in it I think I can see why what an evening, we've had owls, we've had parakeets, we've had herons squawking, the proverbial ducks, they've gone off in the bushes now. Oh, I have thrown out a load of bread out there, loads of bread. I've heard nothing slurping anything off the top, so maybe they are on the bottom, they're not on the top. But thank goodness, no full moon. Is this why it's fishing well? No full moon. I have to get this bed repaired because it is very, very comfortable. just here the planes are gonna stop about 11 tonight and then it will be very quiet and then we'll hear the creatures coming out hopefully not in here my well, fish let's have one more one more one more single tone screamer I might even get to 12 1 o'clock might try and get a few zeds in well put this off for you people it's gone quiet for about half an hour, just over half an hour, I haven't had anything at all. The guys with the bait boats over there, I haven't seen their headlights come on, so I guess they're not catching, I haven't heard any splashes. The downside is behind the island over there, I thought, oh, somebody's got a big garden light on over there. Unfortunately, it looks like it's the moon coming up. Once that gets over the top of the trees, I think I'm going to call it quits on that bean can rod, my uh, spank bowl rod with the bite alarm. Wind it in, just leave my other two out and I think I'll try and get some uh, sleep because I do not fancy, it's like a one run night when I get the full moon. It's, um, I'm not saying it's useless, totally useless. Some people might love the full moon. I personally have never done great on a full moon but it's still on a full moon. Still, it is what it is. I've done very well. Even if I don't get anything else, I've really enjoyed it. I still like a bigger fish though. Another ice carp. This one is a mirror. Got a nice big paddle tail, this one. Good looking fish. Not a monster, 11 pounds 7. But he's a nice quiet one. Here he comes, people. That's another great fish, isn't he? Great big one, great big mouth. No trouble picking up those boilies, is he? That's a beauty. That's a question of come in number nine. <laughs> wow, boy. I can hardly believe it myself. Floating grass, I've been throwing that bread out as I told you. I could lay in there on the bed here in this slurpy slurpy. <coughs> I thought I could have tried it. I've absolutely got to try it. Was it worth it or not? Wow. Hard to believe people, 17.7, floating crust off the top. What a whacker, what a belly on it. That is just about filling up the lens. <laughs> what a session. Come in number 10, your time is up. Well, 17.7 off the top is a real, real result for me. It's gone dead now and the moon up there. I think it's, I think it's a waxing moon. It's coming up. It's waning moon's going down. Waxing moon's coming up. So it's just over halfway across the moon, which means the sea angle tells me the tides have been really small, and now they're getting bigger, going from neap tides to spring tides. I wonder if the tidal cycle or the moon cycle actually has an effect on 
smaller fresh waters like this uh, lake. Anyway, it's gone. I've, I've piled it with bread. Obviously, I've got plenty of bread out there. Nothing else has shown. The guys with the bait boats are going in and out, in and out, in and out. I don't know whether they're catching. But, you know, I've had 10 now, goodness me. And it is quarter to one. So that one came about 20 to one, 25 to one. With the moon up there, I don't know whether they're going to keep taking on the top. <clears throat> there were two or three fish, definitely I could just see before the moon came up. Now whether it kills it totally, I don't know. I don't feel I'm going to get much sleep tonight somehow. It'd be nice if they actually came up on the top again and I wouldn't have to worry about but Oh, there we go. He's on, I think he's on. Yeah, we missed that one, boys. If you get frantic fishing, something else you can do is is tie yourself up some of these ready. Right, you could do three. I reckon three. You know, if you're fishing a couple of couple of rods, just in case, because this all takes time, and that's eating up your fishing time. If there's two or three fish moving through, and they're all together. You really want to capitalise on it and just be able to hook one of these up and get it straight out there. But make sure you put them somewhere dry in a bait box. I like putting them in with some two mil pellets because they're nice and dry. And again, with the mesh, make sure you get it back over the tube, not like me, have it fall out all the time. And then I've got everything else I need there. About three of these and you're ready to go for the next cast. Might be brilliant this time people. Might be nothing. And you can actually see that boily by his mouth. Well, oh, falling over now, so tired. Ten past one. Let's put this out for you. Um, I'm stuffed on the floating crust because the moonlight has come out, the ducks have now been able to see all the crust on the surface, so my chance could have been I could have got more fish out of it, but no. I think I knock it on the head, and I think I'll see if I can get a few 20 minutes or something like that dozing, and uh, fingers crossed, anything else from here is a bonus. You don't know cold till you've been out about 3.30 in the morning. I just feel that my experience with full moon fishing, I won't say born some fruit, chickens come home to roost, is that the one? But I mean, once the moon came up, the ducks could mop all that bread up on the surface. <coughs> that was that done. Interestingly, only one fish, one fish I think it was. I finished 11 carp. I haven't finished yet, the bait's still out. But 11 carp, which is really, really good fishing. But the majority before, well, nearly all of them by twos, I think it was, before that moon came up. 
and now the only thing out there is traffic noise. Not great, but you can hear it hissing in the background. Beautiful mist coming off the water. Just wait for that sun to come up. A load of mist coming off the water. The bait boat has at last stopped. God, that thing going out, clonk, clonk, clonk. You can hear it clonking, clicking. Huge floodlights on it. Another guy's caught fish, I saw, I saw him, they're catching fish, but for me, you know, just, I don't know, sort of, is it like cheating? I mean, I'm casting out in the dark, using a bait boat. I don't think, would you need a bait boat on a, on a water this size? It seems very, very noisy and very, very bright. Headlights, everything. It's like a bloody motorway out there, this thing going up and down. It's going to be a sunny one today. Do I go back on the bream? The carp go dead? Or do I go home? Or do I go back to sleep? I've got at least two hours, I think, hour and a half, two hours. I think I'll go back to sleep. Shame to leave that setting. Oh, guys, there's the bait boat. Let me whack in there. Probably won't focus with the fog. There he goes. You can just see him in blurred. He's on his journeys again. The bait boat in the distance. Going past the rushes. Now I can see it. I don't know how they work it at night, but I can see it. He's going to put the bait right under the under the bushes there. Travelling through the mist, he's deposited the guy's tackle and bait right under the bushes where you couldn't even cast. So I can see a logic in it there. It's now 20 past nine. In the morning, the other guys, the bait boat boys, have gone. Probably the batteries have run flat, I should think. I think I'm going to get rid of this ground bait. I'll leave a two cart rides out. And just see if I can't pick up a breeze. Oh. So 